This was the book that I used for a course in graduate school. The name Basic Algebra kind of implies that it's a book that will teach you to factor or solve quadratic equations or something of that nature, but it's actually an abstract algebra book. And it's kind of a fun book because at least two people have seen this book and they've said basic algebra and they thought it was like, you know, something really basic like systems of equations or, you know, learning about logarithmic functions. This is actually a graduate level abstract algebra book. So I did use this for a course, but I didn't use the book that much. And the reason was prior to taking this particular course in graduate school on abstract algebra, I had taken two other courses in graduate school on abstract algebra. So I already had a lot of abstract algebra. In fact, on the first test, there were three questions and I, I'm pretty sure I got them all right. I made a small mistake somewhere, maybe. Um, I, don't, I don't recall, but I know I knew ex how to do two of them pretty much exactly um, right away. And that was just because I had a lot of experience. It wasn't because you know, I was, you know, really brilliant or smart or anything like that. That's one of the things that I think is important to realize about mathematics. It's that a lot of times people might be good at something, but it's because they have practiced, because they have spent hours on it, um, because they've spent a lot of time on it, they have more experience than you. So something to keep in mind, you know, when you're comparing yourself to people, if you're doing that. Um, yeah, let's look at the contents and just take a closer look at this book. Uh, maybe I can show you some abstract algebra. Hopefully you can understand some of the stuff that we look at in this video. Let's go through the contents quickly and then get into the mathematics. So it starts with uh, preliminaries about the integers, polynomials, and matrices. Vector spaces over Q, R, and C, those the rationals, uh, real numbers, and complex, complex numbers. This is like linear algebra stuff. Then here it goes into groups and it talks about group actions. A lot of books actually don't even talk about group actions. A lot of the beginner books, like the book by Sarah Chino, which I always recommend, which I think is fantastic. Um, doesn't talk about group actions. Speaking of other books, I'll leave links to this book and other good algebra books for beginners in the description. Theories of a single linear transformations, transformation, multilinear algebra, advanced group theory, commutative rings and their modules, fields and Galois theory, and modules over non-commutative rings, really cool. So let's jump into some of the mathematics. Um, let's look at, let's just start with a group and we'll go over what a group actually is and maybe you'll understand it. The prereq, by the way, for a book like this is um, knowledge of proof writing. So page 117, let's jump to that. So 117. Here's 117, let's zoom in here. It says, a group is a non-empty set G with an operation G cross G into G, satisfying three properties, one, two, and three below. So let me explain this, this notation here, this G cross G into G. So basically um, your input is an ordered pair and your output is a single number. So think of like addition as your operation, so two, and three are your inputs, or two comma three, it's the ordered pair, and the output is the sum, two plus three, which is five. So it's basically, it's a binary operation. So addition is a binary operation on the set of integers, because if you have two integers and you add them, you get an integer. That's key, right? The elements have to end up in the same set. That's why all the Gs are the same. Or like, if you take two real numbers and you add two real numbers, you're also gonna get a real number. Um, however, um, subtraction is not a binary operation on the set of positive integers because if you do two minus six, um, that's you're subtracting two positive integers and you're getting negative four. That's not a positive integer. So that's not a binary operation. So I digressed a little bit. In the absence of any other information, the operation is usually called multiplication and is written. So this is the notation people usually use. There's no multiplication symbol here. Notice he says with no symbol to indicate the multiplication. Yeah. It's a good book. He like says what I'm thinking before I even <laughs> read. The defining properties of a group are, um, yeah, so here are the properties of a group. So there's three, right? So the associative law, that has to be true for all elements. So basically A times B times C is the same as A times B times C. That's what's ha happening there. For all A, B, C, the existence of an identity element. So there is an element one in G, such that A1 equals one A equals A for all A and G called uh, the identity element. 
So some books uh, don't use one. Instead, they use E. That's also very, very common. Three, for each A and G, there exists an element A inverse in G with this product being equal to one. So the existence of inverses. And here he proves that um, the identity is unique and the inverse is unique. I have videos for both of these. My videos are not one line proofs. So um, this takes a lot of effort um, to learn. And even that one, even this, this first equation here, one prime equals one prime one equals one. I mean, you, know, you have to sit there for a while and try to understand that using this, right? So the identity element definition. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. So examples of groups would be like, let's see if he gives any. Let's see. Wow, he, he uh, well, we come to other, I guess he gave an example down here. The trivial group, that was the example. Hmm. Yeah, we need more examples than that. So let's, let's go see. So he, he could have given more examples there, but instead he defines subgroup homomorphism, right? And he just really grinds through the theory here. I mean, there's some serious grinding here of, you know, he's really pushing out a lot of math in a brief amount of time. So this is a very dense book. It is definitely not basic algebra. So um, it's not what you think it really isn't. It really, really isn't. What a great book. Yeah, let's, let's skip ahead. Here he talks about um, congruences, congruence classes. Wow. Permutations, the symmetric group. I mean, he's reviewing all the group theory just quickly, 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 quickly. Cayley's theorem. Look at that. Zoom in there. Any group G is isomorphic to a subgroup of invertible functions on a set X. Set X can be taken to be G itself. In particular, any finite group within elements is isomorphic to a subgroup of the symmetric group. And then he has some symbol there. Usually they use SN for that, but that's a funny symbol. I don't know what that is. If you know what symbol that is, like what type of lettering that is, there's a name for that, and I used to know. I have um I have this these books. Um, Lectures in Abstract Algebra by uh, Jacobson. I have the old books, like the original ones, like they're really, really fancy looking. And they use a lot of letters like this. And I, I, I forgot what they're called. I'd either, it either said it in the book or th th there's a special name for that. So if you know, please let me know. I'm really, really curious about, you know, those symbols. Because I, I have a hard time with that. I had a hard time with uh, the Jacobson book <clears throat> because of that or book rather, it's a series. I believe that um, those books have been reprinted and perhaps now they're in a, a single volume. I don't own the newer edition of uh, Jacobson. Ocean spaces and homomorphisms, cool. So yeah, a lot of abstract algebra in this book, so maybe now you know what a group is. Here they talk about normal subgroups. That's a proposition, it says, if H is a normal subgroup of G, then G mod H, that's how you read that, okay? The G and the slash and the H, let me zoom in here, get some better quality. This is a big deal, I believe. Becomes a group under the inherited multiplication, so it's multiplication of uh, cosets, right? So those are called cosets. And the function Q from G into G mod H given by this definition is a homomorphism of G onto G mod H with kernel H. Consequently, every normal subgroup of G is the kernel of some homomorphism. That's very important. So that's a little bit more advanced. We have some nice diagrams. Those are really fun. Yeah, this is really cool. This is, you know, brings back a lot of memories. This is, um, you know, really good mathematics here. This is a good book. There's other good books besides this one um, for abstract algebra. I like Dummett and Foot. Um, I've spent more time with that one than this one. I'm not saying this is a bad book. It's just one I really like. Um, and I'll leave all this in the description in case you want to check it out or like compare reviews. You know, do your own research. Right? What book is better? You know, you can you can read the reviews and stuff. Sometimes the reviews, um, the people, the things people say are good. Sometimes I disagree. I mean, it's just everyone has an opinion. You know, I've seen I've seen terrible stuff on Reddit, like terrible like <clears throat> grad school advice stuff, and I've seen good stuff too. So it's the internet. So you know, read with caution and make your own decisions. But I think this is a pretty good book. Uh, I'll, I'll try to find it. I'm pretty sure it's still in print and I'll leave a link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know. And until next time, good luck and take care.